In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure route maps on your Cisco switches and routers. Um, so first of all, what is a route map? Well, a route map allows you to manipulate certain pieces of information inside of a packet. Um, in this video, I'm just going to show you how you can manipulate the next top IP address, but there are a few more um, parameters that you can set um, or change inside the packet once it goes through the switch or router. Um, for example, you can change the output interface. So rather than changing the next hop IP address, you can change the output interface that the packet goes out of, of the switch or the router. So why would you use a route map? Well, when you have a default route in place in your configuration, um, well, um, just in case those viewers who don't know, a, a default route is a route that matches any other traffic that the switch doesn't explicitly know know about. Um, so if you do a show IP route on your switch, and if I do that now, so the switch knows all knows about all of these networks, okay? Um, and any other network uh, that it doesn't know about, it's gonna send, it's gonna put through this statement basically. Um, this here, this 0.0.0 .0 slash zero means anything all other networks that they switch. The switch will process these first because it knows about it, it explicitly knows about it. Um, but any other networks that it doesn't know about, it will put through that. And it's gonna send it to this address, which is the next hop router along from the switch. Um, so coming back to that default route, all networks that the switch doesn't know about are included in this statement. So if you had a packet come in with a destination address of uh, I don't know, 88, 92, 41, 100. Um, there's no 88, 92, 44, 100 um, address in here or subnet that matches that. So it will get sent via this statement here. And it'll get sent up to the next router and the next router will process it, so on and so forth. But what if you wanted to manipulate the traffic so that you can send it in a different direction? Um, well, that's where route maps come in. So for example, just say you had a staff and a guest network. So you wanted to put the guest network um, through a different internet connection because you don't want them hogging all the bandwidth um, of your staff's internet connection. You know There are other ways to do that, obviously throttling bandwidth, throttling and QoS, whatever. But you just want to make it exclusively so that the guests go through a different internet connection or just take a different route through the network. Um, you can do that using route maps. So you would apply a route map to your switch or your router to say um, match the guest network subnet and send it to 192.168.254.1 or something, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically what a route map is and why we'd use it. Um, obviously, as I said before, there are other things you can do with a route map. Um, besides setting the next hop IP address, so go in and take a look at the command. Um, I, we will in a second, but um, if you want to find out more about the other features, obviously go in and see yourself. So the prerequisites for this is um, on some platforms you need the IP services image to do this, um, to do do route maps, um, or at least more advanced features of route map. Uh, on this particular one, I've got a 3560 Catalyst switch. It's a compact Catalyst switch, and the image that's already on it allows me to implement route maps, and it also allows me to put them onto a VLAN interface. And you might notice on some um, other Catalyst switches that uh, you'll need an IP services image. Um, and also, we need to change the um, SDM template, uh, which I've done in another video on a 2900, uh, 2960 switch. But uh, the way you do that is if you go to global config and SDM prefer, and you want to choose the routing template. Okay? Uh, if you want to find out more about what SDM does, uh, obviously check out my other video on uh, the Catalyst 2960 routing features, and I'll go in more in depth on that feature in that video. So once you've done that, um, you'll need to reload your switch, or uh, you don't need to do this on the router, obviously. Uh, but you'll need to reload the switch. And then once the switch comes back up, we can then go on to set up the route map. So what you'll need to do first um, is create an access list that's going to match the traffic that you want to be applied to the route map. So, for example, going back to the example I told you about with the guest network. Say you had a guest network, take their subnet 
and put it into the access list. So I'm going to show you an access list I've already set up. Um, So basically what I'm saying here is I want, so the permit statement puts, makes the root map look at it basically. Um, don't, don't Deny means don't look at it, don't look at it, don't put that through the root statement, the root map statement. Um, so what I'm saying here is I'm permitting, I want IP traffic from the source subnet of 192.168.20 to go, that's going to anywhere. So any traffic that any traffic any destination that that one ninety two one six eight twenty seven is going to, I want to put that through the route map statement. Okay, so now we go on to the route map. So the command for this is route map, route map, and then we give it a name. So we can say um, guest, and then we can say permit. Obviously, we want to permit the set operations. Uh, and then the sequence. So with a root map, you can have uh, multiple statements um, that get processed in a sequence. So you can have the root map guest and then sequence uh, number one, number two, number three, and they all get processed together, uh, one after the other. Obviously, one, two, three, you know, sequentially. They'll get processed sequentially. So we'll just say this one. And then what you want to do is you want to say use the command match. And we want to match based on IP addresses. So we want to match, match IP address. And then we need to give the access list number that we created earlier, which is 101. Okay. Now we want to set the IP next hop. Okay. Um, now there are a few more options that we can do here. So uh, the most interesting one is obviously verify availability. So what that means is that if the next hop, so we're about to specify the next hop after this after these commands, so you can see there, you can put it straight away if you want. But with verify availability, you can say, make the switch, look at an SLA monitor. Um, if you want uh, view on SLA monitors, I've done a few videos um, with ASA and a couple of other routing ones where you can go and look at SLA monitor. But basically, in, in essence, the SLA monitor is um, pinging an address somewhere um, to make sure that particular object is up. So you can reference that object that is up, um, or it could be in the down state, um, here to verify availability. So if your SLA monitor is pinging an address and it's up, then this statement would be true, so it will be processed. However, if the SLA monitor is down, then it will not subject it to this statement and it will use the normal route within the routing table, or the traffic will just go to the, the routing table. So that, that's it's, uh, handy for keeping in mind you know, you can do things like that just in case that you want your guest to have failover. You know, if this this if the next hop along that we're about to specify ever goes down, um, then you can obviously, you know, as I just said, you can put it through to the routing table as normal. So our next hop is going to be 10.100.100.1. And just before I go on, I'm just going to show you the setup that I have, the, uh, the topology. So I'm down here on my laptop and I'm hardwired into the catalyst switch that we're programming at the moment. And then here I've got a Juniper SRX firewall that's acting as a router, it's got some basic config on it. And here I've got a Cisco 800 series router. They're both plugged into my BT Home Hub, which is um, an ISP supplied router. Um, so that's how they're gonna get internet. And both of these have default routes pointing to that BT Home Hub. Now obviously for the purpose of this demonstration, I just want to show you how you can manipulate the traffic to send it to two different ways um, to the same place. Um, obviously, if you've got a guest and a staff network, um, two different internet connections, then your setup is slightly different. Your router one might go to the ISP router from you know ISP one and then one your guests use go to here in the ISP two router. But just Obviously, I don't have the luxury of having two ISP connections, so I'm just showing you how you, how you can implement this. It's essentially the same thing. We're trying to get to the internet, yeah? So these two will obviously connect to the internet. This home hub connects to the internet. So, back to the configuration. Um, I've set my next hop to 10.100.101, which is the Cisco 800 series router. Now, if I just quickly go back to the mode and do show IP route. I've got a default route that's pointing to the Juniper SRX firewall. 
Um, and then obviously as per the diagram that connects to the beta home bubble and goes up to the internet. So this is Cisco router. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is like, like an access list. If you don't apply the access list to an interface, it doesn't become active. It just sits there doing nothing. So what you need to do is you need to go to the interface that you want. And obviously bear in mind um, what I said earlier. Some platforms require you to have a higher level image like IP services in order for you to apply it to like VLAN interfaces or routed interfaces, whatever, what have you. Um, you just need to go on the Cisco website and check and do the feature check. Use the feature check tool and you can find out what image or iOS version you need for your particular platform. So I'm going to go on to VLAN 20 because that's where my guest network is. And I'm going to say IP policy, which is the command for applying root maps, then root map, and then we're going to give the root map name, which is, what do we call it? We called it guest, I think. What do we call it? It was guest. Let's just get rid of that. Guest, yes. So IP policy root map guest. Then enter. So now our root map is applied. So just to demonstrate that now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tracer on my computer from the command prompt. And what tracer does is it will it will log all the hops that the packet takes. Um, throughout the network, send them back to your computer and let you know what path it's taking up to, to where, what destination address you specify. Let's go and hit that now. So the first address is obviously the VLAN interface on the Catalyst switch. The second one is the, the uh, Cisco router and then there's my ISP router. Okay, that's as far as we need to go. So now, let's, let me just disable that so uh, if you go to so I can say no IP policy root map guest and then we'll do the same thing again and it should take me via 10.99.99.1 this time yep there you go so let me just explain that to you so we do a sharp IP route, you can see that our default route is pointed to 1099.99.1, which is this one here. Okay, we were going this way. Let me just do it in a different color, actually. So we were going from the switch through this way, out to the internet. We're now going this way. So route map applied is red, route map, route map not applied is orange. And the reason that it takes the orange route is because the route map's not applied and it's subject to the normal routing table. So whatever you've got into the routing table for the destination address, that's the route it's going to take. Okay, and there's one more way that you can verify that your route map's working properly. And you can do a show route map. And if you come to the bottom here, you'll see policy routing matches, three packets, 318 bytes. Okay, so... I hope you found the video useful and if you've got any requests or you need anything explained further then please don't hesitate to message me. Thank you for watching.